Hey there. This is Beth. And um, since I just did the divination um, question for the YouTube Pagan Challenge, I thought I'd just do a run through of tarot decks. This is tarot only. This is not including oracle cards because, well, that would just be, what, too long. So these are my oracle tarot decks, not oracle, tarot. Can we all say tarot? Yes, we can. Good. I'm going to, who do I want to start with? I have a big old pile here. Okay. Um, back in the day, I wrapped them in scarves. Um, it gets really big and bulky after a while. Um, I never bought a scarf full price. I always bought them on sale. <laughs> you can, you know, and it makes a nice way to just lay them out. This is my first deck. My mom bought it for me. It is the Mythic Tarot, and this is the deck from the 80s. This is the original artwork. I hear they have changed it, which I find really sad because it's just a great deck. Um, this is more of a personal deck for me these days. There's a card, Queen of Wands. It's, my deck is, as you can see, it's old. It's well used. Um, it was my only tarot deck for probably a very long, a very long time. Several years, at least, before I bought another one. Um, this is one of my favorite lovers. We got that whole golden apple thing. There is a nice theme of the golden apples that run through this as a Discordian. And Eris Lover. Yeah, I like that little theme. Gorgeous deck. Um, don't know what the new one looks like. Old one. You get your hands on the 80s one. Snarf it up. Judgment. I always like this little gesture with the little mummy people. Help me, help me, Hermes. Help me. <laughs> Lovely coloring. Like I said, it's from the 80s, though. And you have Castor and Pollux. The um, whole Greek myth aspect is very well done in this deck. It's well thought out. It's not just kind of higgly piggly. I didn't just like say, oh, yeah, yeah. It's like the whole cups is wonderfully and beautifully illustrated by the um, Eros and Psyche myth, which just, I still use this myth today with the cups, especially the Eight of Cups of going on this journey of, <clears throat> it's not so much losing things, but gaining things that you have to go away to get what you want, of all the tasks that are set for her to accomplish in order to stay with Eros. But yeah, great deck. So if you can find the original one, definitely recommend it. Um, I don't know if they're still doing the same book that they did. The book I have is quite substantial and very, very good. It's in a bookcase somewhere. So I'm not going to show it to you. But um, really excellent book came with the one I have. I kind of looked like they were still doing a good book when I saw it at a bookstore. Um, who's next? Just kill off the ones that are in scarves first. <clears throat> this is my Morgan Greer deck. This one's been used a lot too. This was probably my first or second not my first, my second or third deck. I want to say probably second. Um, I really enjoy this deck. It's good, solid deck. I like the colors. I like the imagery. It reads well for me. It's an older deck. I love this one. This one is just has some of my favorite swords cards in it. Um, it's very primary in a way as far as colors. I keep a couple of years of just 
hangman's gonna stand up. Still trying to make the hangman stand up. Well balanced deck. I three three of swords. He oh pretty. I find the swords in many ways are some of my favorite cards in this deck. Good, solid. Would definitely recommend it to anyone who wants a nice basic deck. And by basic, I mean not. It's not going to overload your senses, if you, especially if in the learning phases. I don't think they're really cups. Yeah, Altero is complex. I know it doesn't matter how simple it is. It all has a complexity to it. Good job. I love the swords in this, in this deck. It's my personal card. Good deck, though. Um, <clears throat> this would be something if you are in your beginning phases of the Tarot and are looking for a deck or looking to start expanding it's a good one to to fall into look at that let's see there's the eight of cups there's that whole journey aspect that the cupid and psyche myth eros psyche cupid same kind of guy one's greek and one's latin but illustrates so wonderfully but it is a rider weight smith based so you have that um and one big it's not chari the chariot, but for certain reason the chariot made me think it. Um, strength in the mythic tarot is depicted by Hercules, which is an older depiction, uh, harking back to um, before you would see the girl with the lion. It was often Hercules, who in antiquity and myth and on the popular TV show, personification of strength. Just, I still really enjoy this deck a lot when I read with it. I, I have never got bored with it. Morgan Greer really, really do highly recommend it. Um, and yes, it is a bit 70s, 80s, you know, you got mustachio and things like that. Doesn't really bother me. Some of the swords I'd say the sword suite, this is like one of my favorite two of swords, are just so gorgeous. And for me, that would be like the huge stand up. It just, I enjoy it. Great colors, little primary at times as far as colors go, but a lot of fun. Okay, I think this is the last one wrapped. <laughs> Let's save the Derwick ink pen pencil from floor. My friend. A friend made this for me. So, yeah, isn't that gorgeous? That's for my Thoth deck. It, it goes beautifully with the Thoth. I have the small one. Um, it was the one I smoked to me, so it's, it's tiny. Um, this one is currently not in use for other people. Um, it is predominantly featured on my personal crystal grid and using it. I love this deck. I love this deck. I opened it up and I just, oh, I loved it. I tend to refer to Curly Harris because without Lady Frida Harris, we would not have these gorgeous images. And while she was guided by Curly in creating them, Oh, she did a beautiful job. High Priestess. Oh, yummy, yummy, yummy. They're so deep. There's so much going on in these cards that they're just... I opened them up and I was just like, oh. I immediately, they immediately jived with me. I'm very animistic about things. And usually it's... I, you know, they sit around and suck up my energy and I use them and stuff like that and get to know each other. These just, it was an immediate connection. Okay. Yeah, I, yeah, right. 
great deck. Great deck. Um, very complex. Would not, unless you're already very well versed in <clears throat> arcane lore and magic systems theories of all sorts. Because, I mean, really, I do not use these to their full attention because I'm shit with, with astrology. Not my thing. I like, it's interesting and it's cool. I want other people to do stuff with it. It's fascinating. It, not my thing. Queen of Wands. I was just like, oh. I, I just, I love this deck. It's vivid. It's emotive even within the pips that often, they don't, there's no people in the pips. Um, but you definitely know what's going on in them. They're very emotive. <coughs> I'm, there are some times that Crowley and I do disagree on what he labels a card. Um, his words for the card tend to be a little straightforward. And I think can can um, distract people, especially people who aren't as familiar with Tarot. But yeah, I'm these have remained an all-time favorite. Great deck. Highly recommend Thoth. Curly hair stack. Especially if you're looking to really expand your horizons and push your parameters. Um, I do remember reading the book of Thoth by Alistair Crowley and the first time I read it I was just like it a lot of people complain that it's hard to get through which it kind of is and there's parts of it that are just like oh my god get over it Crowley. But there are aspects of it that just were like Wow. And now people are like writing books about that book, which I haven't bought any of them, which I think about. There's too many books in the world to buy. There's too many interesting books to read. It makes it difficult for a bibliophile. I don't want this deck. I think it's this one. And this is one of my older decks. I think so far, yeah, these are like my first four decks. We've this is the Sacred Rose. Where's the back? Yeah, upright. Be upright. Back, so you got roses. Um, no one has any pupils or irises in this deck. So they all look a little alien-esque. I kind of like the alien vibe. Um, it was based on, if I remember correctly, work brain, <laughs> stained glass windows. There we go. It just, brain shut down there for a second. I like the visuals, like the color, these are a little bit more vivid than the Morgan Greer. And these, I think I bought after the Morgan Greer. They're not quite as beat up as the Morgan Greer are. I've used these a lot over the years, though. They're still a favorite deck. I still enjoy reading with them. Just, I like the no pupil thing. How everyone looks like a little alien. I like the colors, I like the vividness. These two of wands. They always feel very magical to me, and that also may be because like you get that little sparkly aspect. They have little sparkly thingy kind of things here and there. The colors are vivid. Rider Waite Smith format. Um would be another good beginner deck, or if you're looking to expand out. Again, is an older one. Older doesn't mean necessarily mean good or bad, but yeah, you know, when I started, it was very hard to find things, and so things like Sacred Rose, Morgan Greer, Thoth, were very much staples and decks that were easier to find, and I. Mythic's not featured, but um, Morgan Greer, Thoth, and this one are featured, I think, in Mary Kay Greer's Trail for Yourself, or, which is a very good book. I highly recommend it. 
but good deck. I would highly recommend this still. I still enjoy reading with it. And that's kind of one of the things. Um, it's like the Tarot deck I modified, the Renaissance Tarot. Um, it was okay. Even when I first bought it, it was not my favorite. And yeah, I just am over it. I'm not going to keep something that I'm not going to use. I'm either going to gift it or, in this case, modify it. Um, I'm going to do this one just because it's kind of setting up. This is the Night Sun deck. Um, yeah, I, have, I think there's an unboxing. I, I did an unboxing. I'm not sure. I So far, I kind of... This deck came on the week my dad died. I have not started using it. I still like it. Um, here's the pack. I haven't started using this one yet, though. Um, I will someday. I do like it. It's a darker deck. Um, leans more toward the, towards the esoteric side of life. I still really like the imagery in this one. It stalked me for quite a while before I bought it. And I don't really discriminate between, say, a commercial deck and an indie deck. Um, I kind of buy both. I try to balance it out. I do like to support the indie, independent people, just because they're doing such marvelous work. You know, Justice is very cool. There's kind of this fractal Geiger vibe to this deck, and I think that's part of what draws me to it. But I haven't started using that one yet. Still kind of waiting for me to be ready to use it. Um, who's next? I have to finish commercial decks and then go into indies. Cosmic Tarot. Older deck, but newer to me. I love this deck quite a bit. I use it quite frequently. It's one of my favorites for doing card pulls. It likes large amounts of people. The Myth Tarot does not, and neither does the animal Os Fortuna. I hate that one really despises the card pull. It asks me not to be used ever again on them. Card pulls are like, I do them for a couple of Facebook groups. And it's basically people post, and I pull a card for them and give them like a little mini reading. Um, and times. If I have more time, I'll like do, you know, like 20 to 30 people, if not more, depending. I've done more in the past. And so it's real rapid fire, and certain decks do not like that rapid fire and changing of energy. This is just a fun deck. Um, someone said, um, who was it? They commented, and I can't remember who it is now, on my unboxing of this. And... And some of the people were based on real people because I was mentioning how like some people like reminded me of like Pat Benatar and Linda Carter and Wonder Woman, you know. But no, I love this deck. It's fun. It, it's very 80s and I don't care. I love it. Great colors. It's a fun deck to read with. Lots of rays shooting out of people's eyes, which I kind of groove on for whatever reason. You get a lot of that motif. I had to pass. There's another eyeball shooting dude. And probably this one, the Nine of Swords. Oh my God. This one's the 10, I know, but pretty intense. Has some very, very, like, whoa, whoa, wow, intense swords. I've been putting things the wrong way. Hmm. But Cosmic Tarot, another one. Really, really, really love it. Find I reach for it frequently. And for being a newer deck, you know, that says something to me. That's... that's okay, this is... I've been wanting the Aquarian Tarot for, like, years, and I've never bought it and 
just thinking it's going to be around forever because it's a staple. Yeah, this is back in the 90s. And I guess it's not a staple because when I went to go find it, I had to buy. This is actually a new deck that I bought from a, someone off Amazon, someone who sells on Amazon. I like this deck. Um, so far, I haven't used it as much as I thought I would. I mean, I'm enjoying it. I'm not unhappy I bought it. Here's the back I have. I still really like the Art Nova style of the cards. <clears throat> and as I said, it's one of my newer ones. It's a basic deck. Um, probably not as new as to some of them. But highly recommend it. And, you know, it's, it's nice to have a variety of cards and card images when you deal in tarot. Because certain things and certain people are going to appeal to certain decks. Whoa, I just looked at my time. Okay. Certain decks more so than others. So having a variety of something, you know, in this deck still really does have an aspect that calls to me. And I can actually see this one working its way into grids a lot, which actually it may. Hmm. Idea. There's something I've been working on. Okay, who's next? This one. Okay, I'm trying to keep the indies. Okay. This is Chiro. Martelli? Martelli? I cannot remember Chiro's name. Chiro? M. Yeah. He did Seasons or oh, Seasons or. <laughs> the Oracle uh, Seasons of Oracles Oh shit <laughs> Not that one The Gilded Tarot is um, One of his decks As is The Oracle of Visions Not Seasons of Oracles um, This is his Legacy of the Divine Tarot I love this deck This is used in one of my crystal grids That I use that um, ties in people who have bought from me. It's kind of my abundance and spreading that abundance to my clients. So everyone who is reading for me or works with me in some capacity gets tied into my abundance grid. And I use this one on my abundance grid. I love this deck. I like Chiro's artwork quite a bit. Um, he has this whole story that goes on with this deck. It's just like, not just, oh, I'm going to make a cool deck. He has like this whole post-apocalyptic story that goes with it. I'm like, holy moly, Chiro. Waza. Not my favorite lovers. Death like death. And I feel like I'm going hoarse. Stupid Aspens, it's like March something, March 4th. And the freaking Aspens are cat kidding and I'm allergic to them. So I'm kind of snotty and puffy and hoarse due to the lovely Aspen trees <clears throat> at the moment. But the thing that really sucks is now it starts in March and kind of keeps going to like freaking April or May <laughs> because what happened last year with the Aspens is they all started cat kidding and we have like different phases because different area places are warm and different places are colder and so it's like they started doing it and then it got really cold shut them down and they started back up again later on so annoying. beautiful beautiful deck um I enjoy this one quite a bit. Um, for the time frame that I've had it in, I've used it quite a bit. Okay, so that, I think that's it on commercial decks. And because I've been buying commercial decks longer and they're also less expensive in some cases than the 
independent duck. Not always. Not that I don't mind coughing up some cash for a really cool deck. Dame Darcy's one of my favorites. Oh, she's so sweet. It's cute. It's kitschy. It's fun. Inner child. Um, mermaids. Nautical theme. What more can you want? With pretty, pretty pictures. They're lovely colored. Um, I think this is in one of... This was featured in Favorite Tarot Decks of 2015. I still... It, once again, I reach for it a lot. So, yeah, I talked... I know I've talked about this deck more than once because it is a favorite and remains a favorite of mine to use. Um, this one loves card pulls too. It likes people. It's a very friendly deck. Um, and if you want something different, if you don't want like your standard Rider Waite, Morgan Greer, Sacred Rose, Tarot, this would be a really good be beginner deck. Um, it follows Rider Waite Smith fairly accurately and in a very lovely, cute way. And in some cases, you know, you get like cards like this. Yeah, you know, there is kind of a little morbid element to it, but it's Dame Darcy. She's got a little more vibe to her, which I like. But it's cutely morbid. Fun deck. Totally fun deck. Yeah, I tend to, I don't like to just buy decks because I think they're cool. I try to buy decks that I think I'll use or that I'll love. You know, and every once in a while I like the Renaissance Tarot. Um, here. Because I've read just it a couple of times now. Eh, it won't come out. It's so baggy. They're all just, oh, this one's not just so so there it is. There's one of them. Not ugly. They just don't speak to me. And I'm not in the mood to make them speak to me. So I started altering them. There's I've only done one card so far. So, yeah, and I made a video on it too. You can follow the process. I don't know if I'll do every card, but I plan on doing several of them. Um, I'm going to do this one because I love this deck. It's the new wave to row. I love this deck so much. It's so just, I'm a child of the 80s. And this features music. I, Peter Murphy. Mm -hmm. Bauhaus, Peter Murphy. Mm -hmm. oh, Peter Murphy. And wands are eyeliner, cups are teacups. Liz Frazier, Cocteau Twins is the star. I mean, God, this deck is just well thought out and oh, I love it. I'm, black lace on the back. I mean, totally 80s. Everyone had that lace. And yeah, you two guys, you did. Seriously. She doesn't go for um, Andrew Eldridge, Sisters of Mercy, the Hermit. Like to just our records back in the day we didn't have stuff so she has like Bronsky Bead um, Adam Ant Susie and the Susie from Susie and the Banshees this is bucket from Pet Shop Boys Tears for Fears which is so funny because at one point no one knew who the hell they were Deborah Harry with two honking microphones in one of these, yeah, swords is microphones. So she has this nice little take on the 80s. That's just a lot of fun. Another Sister of Mercy card. Um, she doesn't pick, I always pick like the easy person to identify, and I like that. Um, it is for me a little Depeche Mode heavy at times, but overall doesn't bother me. Don't hate Depeche Mode. Because, you know, you've got Gary Newman as the magician, which is just brilliant. Um, let's, let's see here. Who is 
to David Bowie's in here. You know, you just have a variety of people, and many of them were not like people during the day that people were listening to, at least not where I lived. I'm looking at, we got Terry Nunn. Severin, Steve Severin, Pete Burns, Psych Furs. There is, there is, death. Oh, and the, possibly one of the most beautiful ten of discs featuring Boyd George. I just love this one. This is like probably. This one and the Queen of Discs, which is not in the deck at the moment. Oh, here it is. Here's Death. I when I saw they had Psychic TV, I'm like, holy shit! Psychic TV. That was like a complete selling point here. Depeche Mode. A little too much Depeche Mode, but I can deal with it. Kate Bush is the moon. I mean, really, give me some smush any day. I love her, and as the moon, just. Well thought out. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And that's enough on that deck. Here she is, Susie. My priestess. You know, and some are not necessarily like Candy Darling. There are a couple that are more just subculture than music, but they fit within the scheme of things and it doesn't bother me at all. Okay, what's next? Ellen Malis, Os Fortuna. This is a favorite deck. Um, I cannot speak highly enough of this deck. Megan's on Etsy. You can buy this deck on there. So worth it. So worth it. I love this deck. I love the take of Tarot. And I like how the animals bring it in and this, you know, the quirkiness of the bones. I like that aspect. And it's the quirkiness of the bones that is what um, got I, for the reason why I bought this deck. Because I was on Etsy at that point in time too by the Wild Unknown. And I came across this. And I bought this instead. And I have not regretted that choice at all, ever. Still done on the Wild Unknown. Someday, maybe. Um, I got this one. And that kind of filled that spot. And I just. I love this deck so much. Um, Money readings love this deck so much. And I found that interesting. It's it's a very gentle and sensitive deck. If someone's kind of in a place of pain, it's a good deck to use because it, it eases you out of things. Unlike my Mythic Tarot deck that can be very straightforward and very blunt at times and be like, no, this is what you need to do and you need to do it now and don't fuck with me. It has that kind of attitude. This one is very much very gentle and soft. Mythic Tarot not so soft at times, especially if you piss it off. But yeah, um, I feel like I talk like the first three decks a lot. But yeah, here's the back. It's very simple. She also has an oracle card deck that is very good too. Um, can't remember what her handle is on Etsy. But it's the Animalis Asfortuna. She's on Etsy. You can buy it still. Great, great deck. Continue little Peggy. It came with a really nice box that if I so desired to, I could keep it in. Um, it doesn't come apart very easily for me. It doesn't have those little things, so I tend not to keep it in the box. And the um, New Wave Tarot did not come in a substantial box, such as the Star Child, which is our final deck, if you've made it this far. Wow. Um, I think this is my most recent deck. I pre-ordered this one, and it this is the Akashic Records version, which I thought was only like not very different from the regular Star Child, and it turns out it is um, is very different. Um, All Moon has a comparison of the Akashic Records and the regular one, Star Child one. 
and they were very different. I was really quite surprised because she just called it a different version of the Star Child, which kind of, and then she made it sound like it wasn't all that different. The Star Child and the Akashic Records has some differences that some are very drastic, some are not so drastic. Um, mum, 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 mum. I'm umming. I would not call it the same deck though. After watching All Moon's video, comparison of the two decks, they're drastically different. Um, <clears throat> The Akashic Records one specifically spoke to me as far as like, I need to have this and I need to have it now. This deck, when I got it, I already knew it was going to be beautiful. That I knew. There was no doubt that it was not, that it wasn't going to be gorgeous. And what I didn't realize was that in real life, it's about five times more gorgeous than in pictures. Seriously. I just, I opened this up. Look at that chariot with the unicorn. It's just freewheeling momentum. It's such a different energy than someone driving a chariot chariot with horses. Freedom and emotion. Oh, love it. The use of sacred geometry appeals to me with this deck. The awakening. There are some differences in the major arcana. She just, she's kind of set off on her own path, and I like that. It's not necessarily Rider Waite Smith or Curly Harris based, or Masai based even. It's just, this is her own take on it, Danielle. It's her name. Um, I love this deck. I, since I have got this deck, I've used it a ton, and I've had it since, I think December, I want to say I got here in December, I'm pretty sure I did an unboxing or a pseudo unboxing. I use this all the time, I reach for it all the time, because it's just so wonderful and gorgeous, just gorgeous. This one probably is one of my least favorite, but it's not like a deal breaker. None of Serenity. And this actually, there is like an extra card. Um, some of the shadow cards she changes, and I can't remember it off the top of my head. I've only had it about three months, but I have been using it quite a bit. And I don't really feel the need to go look at and see to remember what those changes are when I'm reading with this deck. Because within the context of the Star Child Tarot Akashic Records version, it is consistent with what it is. Oh my god, it's almost four o'clock. I'm gonna go feed horses. I love this five of crystals. Whole different take on a five of crystals. Whole different take. Seven of Swords, beautiful colors, congruent throughout the whole deck. Use so of, you, know, you have the Egyptian motifs that appear, sacred geometry. Here's the Akashic Records card. This is an additional extra card for this version. Transformation. This one, if I remember correctly, is. Yes, death. Within the con, usually I don't like it when people kind of not dumb down the shadow cards, but like the devil in this one is oppression, which the devil has more than one aspect to, whereas oppression is kind of a little bit more limiting to work with. But within the context of the deck, it works. And I don't think it's. Yeah, I just, I love this deck. So seriously, if you, and from what I've seen of the original Star Child version, it's just as lovely as the Akashic Records version. So if you've been thinking about it, you know, definitely, if it speaks to you, I, I recommend it. It's beautiful. It comes in a great box. 
wish the um, Koi's, you know, you're paying more money for an indie deck and they tend to have better boxes and better books a lot of times than your commercial ones, which you're paying less for and getting cheaper boxes and little white books. So you kind of, I think, you know, with the indie decks, oh, and it's gilded. Did I mention gilding? Yeah, they're gilded. Freaking gorgeous. So that's my current tarot collection. Yeah. I'll do oracle cards some other day. I gotta go feed the horses. You guys have a wonderful day, and I'll talk at you later. Bye-bye.